Let's talk about supplements that have the potential to tank your potassium levels. A lot of people are already walking around with a potassium deficiency and the symptoms that come with it are things like fatigue, heart palpitations, muscle cramps, and even constipation. In such a case, you might not realize that some supplements are making things worse. That doesn't mean these supplements are bad per se, just that the way they work in your body means that you need to be extra careful with them and definitely keep your potassium intake in mind and maybe even increase it to make up for the depletion. That's because potassium is one of the most important electrolytes. You need it for energy, nerve signaling, muscle movement, heart rhythm, and fluid balance. It helps balance other electrolytes, and like I just said, many people are not reaching the recommended daily intake, so chances that your potassium is low are already very high. Often this is due to a diet low in vegetables, but other things can be chronic stress and high doses of the supplements that we will be talking about in this video. The first one is pretty obvious, sodium. Sodium and potassium are like two sides of a seesaw. Your body uses the sodium potassium pump to keep sodium outside your cells and potassium inside. When one goes up, the other one tends to go down. So if you're on a high sodium diet or taking electrolyte powders that are sodium heavy, that can start pushing potassium out of your cells. And the more sodium you retain, the more potassium you can lose through your urine, especially if your adrenal hormones are out of balance since it's aldosterone that governs the balance between sodium and potassium. During acute stress, more aldosterone will be released, which tells your kidneys to hold on to sodium. This helps raise your blood pressure and retain water, which gives your body the extra edge it needs to fight or flight. But over time, if sodium stays high and potassium stays low, it throws off your electrolyte balance. So potassium is needed to counterbalance the sodium and keep your cells, nerves, and muscles working correctly. Next is calcium. Everybody knows calcium works in tandem with magnesium and is good for your bones and teeth. But what you might not know is that calcium is also a potassium antagonist. And while it's not a direct opponent like sodium, it still interferes with how potassium works inside your cells. Just like sodium, it also sits mostly outside the cell and balances potassium and magnesium, which both sit mostly inside the cell. When calcium levels rise, especially from supplements or a high-dose vitamin D, which we will talk about in a second, your cells will have too much calcium, and since it tends to stimulate cells, this can lead to muscle cramps or constipation. So what I want you to understand is that even though sodium is potassium's main antagonist, it's always best to look at your big four electrolytes together. Sodium and calcium outside the cell always need to be balanced with enough potassium and magnesium inside the cell. Now let's talk about vitamin D. This is a great example of how something healthy can become problematic if you overdo it or if you don't balance it properly. The issue is that vitamin D raises calcium absorption from your gut. And like we just said, all that extra calcium antagonizes magnesium and potassium and can drive both down. The more vitamin D you take, the more calcium gets absorbed. This extra calcium then starts crowding out potassium in your cells. While everyone knows that you need to take vitamin D with magnesium, not everyone is aware of the vitamin D potassium connection. So please keep this in mind if you start getting side effects. They will usually be related to muscle function, like muscle weakness, heart palpitations, or maybe some water retention. Many people misinterpret these symptoms and blame dehydration or sleep issues when it's really about their electrolytes getting imbalanced by too much vitamin D. The next supplement I want to talk about is vitamin B12, and this is somewhat complicated. You see, vitamin B12 can lower potassium levels temporarily, and this usually happens when you treat a B12 deficiency. As B12 levels go up, your body starts making new red blood cells like crazy. These new cells suck potassium out of your bloodstream to fill themselves up. It's like a vacuum cleaner effect. This doesn't happen to everyone, but if you're someone with low B12 and then you start supplementing, watch for the low potassium symptoms that we talked about before, especially in the early days of your treatment, and don't be scared if this happens. It usually balances itself out after a while, but in the meantime, increasing potassium intake or eating potassium-rich foods can definitely make a huge difference. Besides all these supplements, there are a few more sneaky potassium drains that also deserve a mention. 
For example, laxatives can cause your body to flush out potassium along with water and waste. Using them for too long can lead to a potassium deficiency and this is usually stated on the bottle because it's such a common side effect. Baking soda is another one. That's because it's high in sodium and can increase urination and when you start peeing more, potassium often gets flushed out along with the pee. Over time, this can also contribute to a potassium deficiency. And lastly, anything diuretic, be it prescription or natural. Like I just said, if something makes you urinate more, be it medication, coffee, some type of tea, or over-the-counter water pills, then it can also lead to a potassium loss. Your kidneys don't really discriminate here, so if water's going out, then potassium will go out along with it. Before I end this video, let me give you some easy tips to increase your potassium retention. Intake definitely matters, but it's also about how much of it stays in your body. The first and most important thing is to improve your adrenal function, especially in terms of lowering stress. When your adrenals are overworked through chronic stress, burnout, or too many stimulants, then your adrenal function can suffer and with it its role as an electrolyte regulator. People with severe adrenal fatigue always also have low potassium, no matter how much potassium they take in. This usually doesn't show up on a blood test, but it will on a tissue test like a hair analysis. So if you're always stressed, chances are very high that your potassium is also low and that you need to work on your adrenals before things will improve. The second tip is a little simpler and it's the magnesium potassium connection. You see, magnesium helps push potassium into your cells where it belongs. If magnesium is low, which is also very common, just like a potassium deficiency, your body struggles to keep potassium in the right place. I say this because a lot of people still measure their magnesium levels inside the blood, but magnesium isn't stored in the blood. We want it inside the cells of your tissue. Low magnesium will also make you more sensitive to calcium, which again can push potassium out. So if you're supplementing potassium but not getting any results, definitely work on your magnesium as well. You probably need more of it. And that's pretty much it. One quick side note, if you want to fix your potassium because you suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome, burnout or a similar condition, make sure to check the description where I link my recovery program. It includes the exact protocol that I use to get my energy back after I crashed and it also gives you a step-by-step -step system on how to fix not just potassium but also all other nutrient deficiencies. It will help you avoid the most common mistakes that can set people back years. For more info just open the description, it will be listed under my programs.